that doesn't get old. All right, guys, we are on our way to the grocery store, but of course I wouldn't go anywhere without my co-pilot. What's up, Griffy? Are you excited to go on a car ride? You know, it seems a little bit impractical to have a sports car when you have a family. And personally, just my personal opinion, I actually like the Tahoe more than the sports car. If you saw the last video, uh, stay tuned for uh, the next step in that saga. But for today's video, uh, we are gonna be taking you on a grocery haul. And if you've been watching the channel, you know we've been doing kind of like a a flexible animal based style diet and Megan and I have both been loving it and Griffin has been loving it as well. I think sometimes it's harder to find food than the kid than it is for yourself. So hopefully in this video you guys will take away some good ideas and things you can implement into your diet as well. Griffin you might be the cutest thing in the entire world. Raspberries are Griffin's favorite food in the entire world so we go through quite a few packs of these. All right, we made it through the fruit section. Griffin, you're a hungry boy, man. I think you're worth it though. One tip about going to the grocery store, never bring your hungry wife, because she's gonna be real, real mean. Gotta get a cake, because Mr. Griffin is turning one year old. By the time you guys are seeing this, he is one. I don't even know how that's possible. And here is where all the fun happens. So I thought I had this huge grocery haul planned out for you. I look at my car, it's full. I look at the receipt. It clearly looks like a lot of food. Then I lay it all out and maybe it's a bit uh, anti-climatic, but I'll at least give you a rundown of the typical foods that we eat on a weekly basis. Now, if you guys have not seen the video I did a few weeks back, I essentially take Paul Saladino's animal style diet and make a few tweaks to make it my own and ultimately end up with essentially what you see here. But the primary foods are going to be meats and fruits. And I think for the majority of people, that's a really good place to start. So when we look at some of the fruit sources we selected, we have got oranges, we have got some organic Fuji apples, I don't really care what kind of apples they are. They all pretty much taste the same to me. Uh, we have also got a lot of raspberries. As I was saying, Griffin is so obsessed with raspberries. These are his favorite foods. There's some weeks I don't even get many of these because he eats so many, but I love that. And I also, as part of this, am trying to set a good example for my son. So I think if he can get on board with eating a ton of fruit, it's just gonna be better for everybody. So we got strawberries, we've got blueberries over here. We did try to get mostly organic fruit. They say that that is very important. I don't really know, uh, depending on who you listen to. I think sometimes organic can be a bit of marketing, but I do understand when it comes to fruit, given all the amount of pesticides they could potentially use. If you're gonna buy organic, fruit is probably a good place to start. Uh, we also have a pineapple. I got one, but I usually go through three of these every single week. I think that's one of the more affordable fruits that you can have. And we also got a lot of bananas, which again, another very affordable fruit. So these are what I try to use as my primary carbohydrate sources. I don't put any kind of limitations on myself. Ultimately, just trying to make sure they're as high quality as possible. Everybody's favorite subject, protein and historically i would just buy whatever meat is the cheapest whatever was on sale whatever i thought was a good value i didn't think it really mattered where the meat came from but over the last year i've started to educate myself starting with a podcast i heard from joe rogan where he interviewed uh the owner of white oak pastures his name is will harris and i think this is the best podcast he's ever done it really opened my eyes to regenerative farming and how important it is the way that their animals are raised, not only for the quality of meat that you end up eating, but also just the treatment of the animal. I never really thought through that process, but the fact that they're raised and they, they live a life uh, that's, that's full and it's uh, not confined into a barn and they're just pumping them full of grain to get them as fat as possible, removing them from their mothers, you know, all these, I guess you call them ethical things, uh, being an animal lover, but his big philosophy is the animals on his farm only have one bad day, but even when they go to slaughter, it's done ethically there um, on site. But Anyway, I say all that to say, 
You can find uh, the white oak pasture beef at Publix. It's a little bit more expensive, it's $10 a pound, but when I really think about it, it makes so much sense uh, as to why I would want to opt for something like this. And so I'd rather pay more in this category of my life and maybe save in some other areas. And again, I think ultimately, even the energetics behind the food, it's going to be better for you. So I eat a lot of beef. We got four pounds here. And then we got some sliders. We're actually gonna have these for dinner. Not too worried about all the red meat. I think it's gonna be fine as long as you're overall healthy. Did get some chicken thighs. So that's gonna be my protein primarily for the week. And I would say if you're new to this and you're looking for, hey, what, what foods should I just start out with? Just eat eggs. Nature's multivitamin, so, so good for you. Um, and then we've got some cheddar cheese as well to mix in and also a lot of the things that Griffin eats will have that cheese in there as well. So I know I just did the video where I show you meal by meal what I eat. Greg can throw some of that on the screen for you right now, but ultimately the majority of the meals are gonna look a lot like what you just saw with fruits and meats. And we do have some vegetables here. This is where I get off uh, the standard animal-based diet. Uh, we have got some green beans. We've got my favorite Brussels sprouts over here. And I thought oh, we also had some zucchini squash, mostly for Griffin. So we do have vegetables. And then some of this is just kind of odds and ends. So pasta, we only eat it once a week, but I do love it. And then I try not to have many uh, processed bread products, but if you're gonna have some kind of taco, you gotta have a tortilla, of course. Again, I try not to be too rigid with myself, just the majority of times, eat the foods that I know are good for my body and the foods that make sense when you think about what you're actually intaking. And then Megan makes a little sweet dessert over here with figs and chocolate chips. I think she even puts a little almond butter in there to make like a Snickers type. So if you need something sweet, that should do it. And we do have some yogurt, 5%. Griffin loves it. So does Alfie. And lastly, uh, what I'll share with you is some of this busy cold brew. Try this for the first time last week. Pretty good. Megan's in a bad mood, so I'm gonna turn the camera on. So she's too embarrassed to be mean to me. <laughs> she's hiding back there. Uh, so obviously with all these food choices, none of it is prepped. So the biggest suggestion I can give to you is, is make sure it's ready to eat when you're hungry, uh, especially if your, your kid's gonna be eating it because you already know uh, that could be a rough time for you if you don't have something ready and they're ready to eat. So all we're gonna do is wash the berries, put them in here, roast some vegetables, have the meats cooked. So that way you just have no excuse. I can promise you if you take Oh my gosh, <laughs> Greg, I'm dying. If you take that one step, this whole thing will be so much easier. Hey Griff, what do you think? Do you think it should be mandatory that all the food be prepared so that when you're ready to eat, it's ready? <laughs> Are you in a little bit better of a mood today? Much better of a mood. Thank goodness, I had to stop the video. She was being too mean to me. Oh my I God. couldn't even handle it. You make, them a, you make them a little orange as well? Mm -hmm. Tell you what, Griff eats better than Anybody I know. He's, He's spoiled. Oh, yeah. And at the risk of sounding redundant, I'm just gonna tell you guys one more time, the key to everything is just having it prepared so that way when you're ready, it's ready, and you don't go looking for things you probably shouldn't be eating. You know, I think nutrition can be very overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out and you're looking at it like, well, what in the world can I actually eat? It seems very limiting, but for me, I just try to make the best possible decisions as often as I can. And it's not perfect tonight. We'll probably be having some pizza. So if we're doing something social or when I travel, I go out to restaurants, I'm probably eating some seed oils and, and some non-optimal foods. But the key to it, in my opinion, is just not letting it stress you out. Like I know it's not going to be perfect. I know I'm not going to be a Paul Saladino extremist. I just get as close as I can. And I think if the majority of people just make very conscious decisions the majority of the time, then we're all going to be okay. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Any suggestions for me? I'm obviously always happy to hear them out and I look forward to talking to y'all next week.